Hi and welcome to iSkipper.net. We're up to lesson 37, which is meteorology, um, the weather of your day skipper, um, your day skipper, well it's part of your theory, but very much part of your practical course. What we're going to do, we're going to have a look at um, uh, a synoptic chart and uh, try and interpret what happens and what causes the weather. And then we're going to look at uh, what causes land and sea breezes in the summertime. So what we've got is a, a part of a synoptic chart. We have got a, a low pressure and we've got a high pressure. High pressure is cool descending air pushing down. And low pressure is warmer rising creating a, a low pressure. Uh, we're... This is a set up for the Northern Hemisphere. Everything for the Southern Hemisphere, you'd have to reverse round the opposite way. So looking at the uh, this low pressure, I'm going to concentrate on here. What we've got is surrounding the low pressure, uh, what we call isobars, and they're lines of equal pressure. Where we have uh, wide open spaces, so for example in this high pressure, and maybe up here, we get light winds. And where we get the ice, uh, isobars really close together, we'll get stronger winds. So uh, looking at this chart here, the strongest winds would be kind of in this, this area here. There's, uh, the winds circulate round different ways. On a low pressure, they will circulate around anti-clockwise. So this low pressure is circulating around this way. And also, the wind is slightly towards the centre. So you can see here, I've drawn an arrow on representing the wind direction. So it's going anti-clockwise and slightly towards the low. And that continues right around the low. Then on the high pressure, we've got the wind going the opposite way. So clockwise and slightly outwards. So we've got a few different fronts we need to be aware of as well. We have got a, uh, we've got this one, which is the cold front, which is blue with triangles. Then we've got the warm front, which is red with the uh, uh, kind of semicircles, <laughs> if you like. Uh, and then we've got an occluded front, which is this one. On an actual chart, it would be uh, purple, but I haven't got a purple pen, so I've just done it in black. That would be in purple. And that's got a mixture of uh, round bits and triangles that would be purple. We've got, uh, you can just think of the, uh, the, the warm front at the, at the front. The warm front is the, the slowest moving part of this. So that's moving relatively slow. And what you get in the, the beginning of a warm front, you can think of like the warmer rising up over the colder. Because that's all this is, is a line dividing between the colder and the warmer. The warmer rises up over the top. And where you get this, uh, this well, this front, this line, is where you get your condensation and cloud and possible precipitation. So this warm front is coming up over your heads, uh, hundreds of metres. And that's where you get the, the very fine, serious clouds forming. And quite often that can mean that we've got a warm front approaching and probably the day after you're probably going to have some uh, some rainy sort of weather. So we've got our warm front moving across and then we can also, when you actually get to the, the actual warm front, you can get very uh, heavy rain and, uh, and poor visibility. So again, that's going to affect your yachting because uh, visibility is an issue. Once our warm front passes, because we could be stationary in this spot here, that warm front's gone through overnight, maybe, and we're here. Then we're in the what we call the warm sector. So this is an area of, of warmer, and again, that uh, the, the weather settles down a little bit. And then you've got the approaching cold front, which is, uh, again, you've got to have uh, like squally weather when this actually comes through. So it's uh, kind of, you're going to have heavy rain. When this is actually moving past you, it's going to be heavy rain, uh, squally, and uh, you'll feel a drop in temperature as well. As that uh, moves on through, 
uh, quite often the best sailing conditions could be after a cold front's gone through. It's the kind of day where you get the cumulus clouds, like lots of different cumulus clouds, sunshine in between. You can get uh, isolated showers with them uh, clouds and uh, you can get real squalls coming through kind of and quite often that's associated with a, co a low pressure and you've got like the, the colder the, the the low pressure coming through so the wind after that as well and that creates really good uh, sailing conditions um, as i mentioned before the warm front's moving relatively slow and that cold front is catching up all the time when it catches up which it has done here it's called an occluded front. An occluded front can be pretty nasty, like horrible weather. It's the type of day where it could just be drizzly sort of weather and it's just drizzly all day, grey days. So that wouldn't be particularly nice weather up there, kind of dull, grey, rainy and, uh, and, and relatively windy as well. You mentioned earlier, in uh, when you get high pressure, that's generally settled weather, light winds, and uh, in the summer that can be, be nice and warm, uh, nice warm weather, settled days. Um, that doesn't mean that it's going to necessarily be light winds on the coast, because what can happen is, because of the temperature difference between the sea and the land, this is the, the land here, uh, the land, kind of 12 o'clock till 1 o'clock gets uh, relatively warm, you get the warmer rises off the land and then to replace that the cool air from the sea because the sea is relatively cool gets drawn in and replaces that and what happens is we get a sea breeze building up so the warmer rises and then we get a circulation going round like so and from uh, kind of one o'clock till three possibly four we can get a strong wind blowing up on the coast and it can be up to a uh, up to a force, I mean force four, maybe force five. And you could also get geographical reasons why it might be a bit windier. Maybe you've got uh, maybe a bit a, a town that's get, going to get warmer than the surrounding countryside, and then you've got a couple of hills to funnel the wind. So in your local area, you could have a real, like, a real good sea breeze uh, conditions. Things to look out for is for warm weather. Uh, without any clouds and also a, a, a shallow in the morning a gentle uh, gradient wind blowing offshore and that will encourage this this cycle to start so this is what we call a land breeze and it's kind of the reverse of a sea breeze but happens at night time we've got the sea that is relatively warm uh, in comparison to the land, the land at night time, again in high pressure conditions, can get uh, really chilly when you get dew on the land. The cold uh, rushes off the land, rises up and warms up over the relatively warm sea, and then we get a cycle appearing across. Um, again, this, uh, this isn't normally as strong as a, a sea breeze, but it can be significant if you're kind of anchored in a... Uh, in an estuary in these sorts of conditions and you've had kind of light winds all day kind of early hours in the morning you might be woke by a few waves against the boat because we've got a land breeze and again these may well funnel down the uh, down the estuary that you're actually anchored in so it's just maybe a bit of a consideration when you're choosing a spot to anchor Something else you need to look at are the, the terms used in the shipping forecast and the inshore forecast. Uh, I'm not going to go through them now, but what I would suggest is kind of getting a, a book out or having a look on the internet and uh, just learning some of them terms. So, for example, if, uh, if it, the forecast says the wind's varying, which way is that going? OK, that's the end of the Met section of, the, uh, of your day skipper. Uh, yep, yeah, see you out on the water.